Not yet. Not yet. Before I get started today, I would just like to remind everyone that AllSides.com is an excellent site. I love how it works and I've made a video about it in the past. What it does is categorize news articles based on established left, left-leaning, center, right-leaning, and established right sources. And it presents different sources on the same story from a centrist, right-leaning, and left-leaning standpoint. I just love it. I think it's a wonderful idea and I use it a lot. That being said, today I want to talk about guns. As I believe most of you know, there has been a Second Amendment test, or as some of the YouTube pundits say, a Second Amendment audit that took place at a Walmart. I personally believe that this kid, well, I say kid, I think he was 20, didn't do anything wrong, so to speak. I think that he did something dumb. I think that there is a social contract around lethal force and the weapons with which we enact lethal force. Excuse me. <clears throat> and while the gentleman in question, of course, armed to the teeth, carrying ammunition, wearing a protective vest, clearly looks like someone who might be ready to, I don't know, raid a drug, uh, raid a drug den or perpetuate the next shass mooting of some kind of school. While he certainly looked that way, all evidence points to him not wanting to do that. It was him expressing himself in a rather heavy-handed, clumsy way, I think. Now, regardless of what you and I might think about this person and whether or not he should have done what he did, it does raise an interesting point about the Second Amendment, and I would like to use this story as a launch point to talk about a couple of things in regards to the Second Amendment that trouble me lately. Glancing at these three headlines, we can see that the general sentiment of the left, center, and right media is that someone with a firearm halted a destructive person or life-threatening person who also had a firearm. The thing that troubles me about this is the tribalism aspect of it. It seems that we can't escape an us versus them mentality now, and that the powers that be don't want us to. They want us afraid of our fellow citizen. They want us afraid or ready or even willing to use lethal force against other citizens just because of not even a difference of ideology and belief but a difference of action. Let's say two years from now, three years from now, this kind of incident becomes commonplace. Citizens drawing weapons on each other out of fear because they believe they already know the intentions of someone else based upon how they walk, what they wear, how they dress, what they say, or even worse, a perceived notion of how they think. I think this is a very dangerous precept, and I believe that we have not only politicians, but also those in media to blame, mostly clickbait legacy media, I think. Did a good man with a gun really stop a dangerous man with a gun? Is he really a would-be shooter? Town Hall is categorized as a right-leaning or full right-wing source, let me ask you conservatives, do you like the idea of someone where you go shop, where you go to work, where you take your children to play on the weekends? Do you like the idea of another citizen walking up to you, drawing a gun on you simply because you carry a rifle to protect your family? Shall not be infringed comes to mind, doesn't it? And what about you, fair leftist? A gun-toting man in body armor sparking a panic at a Missouri Walmart. Is this really what you want? Do you want everyone to be so afraid of guns that they get removed from the public space? That everything but the weakest and smallest of personal defense weapons are in the hands of citizenry? Think about it, fair leftist. If you really believe that the powers that be are evil, racist authoritarians that 
hate gays and hate brown people. Why do you want them to be the only ones to have firearms? Why do you want them to confiscate, take away, force to buy back, or even punitively attack those who want to have firearms to protect their families? It's productive, isn't it? Think about it. And now I ask you, American centrist, American fence sitter, my fellow libertarians, do we want the nomenclature, the type of firearm, the minutia of design schemata to matter when it comes to who can wield what weapon to protect himself or his family or his loved ones or her children or her class? Do we really want to go down this road, centrists? American centrist, I beg you, think of principle, think of ethics, instead of the minutia and the semantics of this topic. No shots fired? Motives unclear. While I definitely agree that no shots were fired, I believe the motive is rather clear. Someone, regardless of their, let's say, sensibility, wanted to audit the Second Amendment and say, I live in a state, Missouri, where it is completely legal to carry a loaded firearm, wear body armor, and go to any public place that doesn't specifically prohibit those things. This man was doing nothing wrong, legally speaking. This man was testing the Second Amendment. And what happened in that test? Another citizen thought him to be a would-be shooter, a terrorist, and pulled a gun on him, commanded he stay still until the police arrived. This bothers me. Why didn't the man talk to him? Why didn't the man talk back? I don't know, because we don't have footage of that, and from what I can tell, we don't have a dialogue between these two men. But think about it. Was it smart to go to a Walmart clad in what most in America these days would consider to be rather obvious mass shooter gear? I don't think so. That wasn't very smart. If you want to make a point about the Second Amendment and really test it, perhaps do so in a place that was not immediately associated in the last few days with a mass shooting site. Perhaps start with a park. Maybe, if you're going to test the Second Amendment in your city or your state, let an authority know ahead of time. I think testing the Second Amendment is an excellent idea, and I approve in spirit of what this man did in Missouri. I agree with him in that regard. But think about it. Do we want to create more strife, more panic, more social division among citizenry? I don't think we should. So to those of you out there that would like to follow in this man's footsteps and really push the Second Amendment and what being a gun owner means, what being an American gun toter means, be smart about it. If you want to go to a public place, perhaps if you are a law-abiding citizen who wants to display your God-given right to protect yourself and your constitutionally protected right to carry firearms, let an authority figure know what you're going to be carrying, what you're going to look like that day. Maybe just one police officer. Maybe whoever owns the park or the establishment, or at least the manager that's going to be on scene that day. Let them know your intentions. At least that's something. And then perhaps walk with a smile on your face. And when you greet people, offer to talk to them about the Second Amendment. Talk to them about what it means to carry a firearm. Maybe, just maybe, that would reach more people and do more good instead of just sowing division and creating more clickbait that we all have to suffer through another day. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. I've been enjoying very little lately, and I have been struggling with my own issues. It's been hard for me to get the energy up to even make content lately. I hope that you're all well. And I hope that one day I can be well, too. I have a lot of ideas for good videos and presentations. It's just been difficult for me to make them lately.
I thank you for your continued support, and I look forward to making content for you again soon. Thank you, everyone, and God bless. Bye-bye.